I want to answer the question to Evangelist Lisa Benson Johnson is a strong African American woman striving to reach the top. She is a loving and <coughs> devoted wife to Montel Johnson, a caring mother to Jacoby, Jonathan, and David, seven grandchildren, and two extended granddaughters. She is an evangelist inspired to reach, the, reach and help others in different elements of their lives. Her mission in life is to allow others to see that. Thought, I'm sorry. Her mission in life is to allow others to see the thought that life has its up and down. In its battles, only God can take care of. And she believes that life must continue on. Through her struggles, she still has accomplished major goals and dreams. Evangelist Johnson is an entrepreneur, a published author, certified grant writer, motivational speaker, she has overcome many health challenges, including a brain tumor, partial blindness, and, and deaf, deafness, and learning deafness, and learning to walk and talk again. She is an active and faithful member of Mount Zion Church of God in Christ, located in Grand Rapids, Michigan, where she is, where she has <coughs> where she has her love for serving her pastor, Superintendent Willie F. Willie F. and Lady Mary E. Tyler. Evangelist Johnson is the choir director, sunshine band leader, chief adjutant, secretary, and praise dancer. Evangelist Johnson also asked God how she could bring all her daughters together and he would come in with great power where he could pour out his daughter's refreshing strength and encouragement. After much prayer, God birthed her into Sister to Sister Ministries Empowerment Group. Sister to Sister, Power, Sister, to Sister Ministries Empowerment Group is designed to take rites of passage <coughs> from teens to womanhood. S2S are ladies, young ladies who have come from the inner city of Grand Rapids, Michigan, most have come from low-income, single-parent homes. Women are natural nurturers and lose themselves while taking care of others. <clears throat> For this reason, <laughs> For this reason, we empower and help them become the women who we were created to be. With that being said, I'd like to introduce you to the Thank you. Your future. All right. And I got a whole bunch of notes, and I can guarantee you these notes are even probably closed. I'm sorry, all I gotta do is mama check. Yeah. Mm. Amen. Uh, don't 
let your past dictate your future. And I can almost guarantee you that the notes that I've studied, uh, I'm very close to folding on. My mother just said one of the most powerful things to me that she could say, um, she said, don't let your illness from this morning take over. All right. Don't let your past dictate your future. Yes, yes, yes. All right. God has a way of letting you know when it's time for him to step in and for him that he's going to show up and show out. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm going to give a quick t uh, testimony <coughs> about a past for about an hour ago. <coughs> um, I have a severe allergy, and one of my allergies is spider or insect bites. Mm -hmm. And the devil has attacked me all night, yeah. even to where this morning I could barely talk. But I thank God for God's children. Yeah. Yeah. I want people to know that oftentimes in our life, things that we go through, it will hinder us from moving forward. Yeah. You've been hurt in the past at a church, so you, have, you, you say you're not going to go to another church. Mm. And a lot of times the hurt that you experienced wasn't even nothing that the pastor or the member done. It's things that you brought them from personal oh, relationships amen. that you brought them into the church house. <laughs> amen. Those of us who have had, I was a single mother. I had children out of wedlock. So when it was time for me to get married, I brought that baggage in from over there to here. And it hindered my blessing here. Right. Amen. There's often times we, my, my thing is, uh, I'm not afraid of failure. Right. I can, I published that many a time. Right. My fear has always been a success. Wow. And I didn't understand that. My dad <laughs> calls me an educated fool. Right. He said, you're smoke so smart, but you do the foolish things because when it's time for you to take another step, you stop. Right. Because what happened is the things in my past, the people who hurt me, the people who talked down to me, who told me I was never going to be anything, okay. it would come back to me. Mm -hmm. um, my mother always was one who no matter what we did, it was the greatest thing. Mm -hmm. I made the ugliest, I've seen it as a grown-up, ashtray out of clay. <laughs> I, I didn't know what it was. To this day, I'm 47. I made it when I was five. My mother still has it. Because it was something that she seemed great. I created something. Amen. Even when Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I've been married. This is my fourth marriage. First time I got married, I ain't know no better. Uh, 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 I got married because he said he and the Marines and this is what we're gonna do when we got something better. I was a better wife. So I came out of that, I thought, went into the next one, into a worse situation. Because he wasn't just a batterer, he was controlling and abusive. Um, we called him sleeping with the enemy to where I literally had to line the cans, friend, you remember, in my cabinet had to be in alphabetical order, and the tiles had to be lined up just right, by color, folded in three folds, and I had to mop uh, four bedroom um, house, all wood floors on my hands and knees. And if I didn't, he would scuff the floor and make me start all over. So I left that. So I thought. Then I married who I thought was whew, my everything. Mm -hmm. <coughs> the kids say something. What's your song? You started on the bottom now. What is it? Started from the bottom now. Uh -uh. <laughs> Cause he started at the bottom. And the job he had, he was making four or five dollars an hour. And my aunt um, was a supervisor at Lear, but they were under Jerry Motors contract. And he didn't even know how to do math or anything. And I taught him how to pass the test. So he, and I was assistant principal at Vista at this time. So I was making wonderful money. And he, at the job he had, he was making seven dollars an hour. But he started from the bottom, and when we got him that job, he started making twenty-one dollars an hour and began to beat on me. <laughs> now, what y'all don't know is, I ain't never been whooped by a woman nor man. Come uh, on now. I feel you, I, my brother, God bless him, Pastor Troy Evans of the Edge Urban Fellowship, have a book called The Edge of Redemption. Chapter 3, paragraph 1 says, My older sister, being me, men feared her. 
She was a brawler. My brothers would come and get me to go beat up men. I had a best friend, God bless her heart, she's going to glory, Valerie Jones. And we caught her Bama. Bama and I was known for, we gonna beat you, cause you're not gonna mess with nobody that's in our circle. We joked about how I was in the eighth grade, and I'm telling my, my style sense to my daughters here, I dream of Jeannie had these pants up called Jeannie Pants. That's right. Well, at that time, I don't know how much they cost, but I was smart. I was in a drill team. And we had blousers, and I would blouse my pants. So I had every color. I had Jeannie, every color, every material. And 15 girls wanted to fight me because they said I thought I was everything. My mother, amen, <laughs> being the mother that she was at that time, <laughs> she says, Y'all can all fight her. I looked at her and said, Mom, what you mean? Y'all can all fight her, but one on one. But first, she had to expose. She ain't got on no genie pants. She popped my rubber band. Why you can't tell my secrets? <laughs> <laughs> so what happened was I fought all 15 girls wow. and whooped them well. Some of them became my best friends, so they thought they were just around me because I protected them. I'm saying all I to say what? I'm whooping men and women, but I was getting beat by a man Come who on. I thought I loved. That's right. Uh, all right. Because what happened was that mess from that first relationship. See, what happened is we don't understand women. When we lay down, Come on. when we lay okay. down with a man just or we got married to him, he's imparting something in right. us. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. When you are having sex there you out go. of wedlock, yeah, and yeah, that man real. imparts in you, right. he's a part of some of him and some of his mess. Because right. God has not ordained that. Yes. Yes. Right. You understand? Yes. So yes. all that mess from many of me, and I'm going to keep it honest, yes. was imparted in me. Yes. So I couldn't be who I thought I was supposed to be. Yes. Right. 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 Keep in mind, all this time I was still in church. I'm going to tell you the difference. Yeah, yeah. I was only in church. Yeah. Right. I go. always directed the choir. Yeah. I always was somebody's administrator. You know, I was a church secretary at 13 and didn't even know. <laughs> Amen. There was a moral church of God in Christ. Everything. Everything they needed, I did. A lot of things I still don't know how I learned. God gave them to me. Yeah. Yeah. But what happened was, I was in church, but I did not have God in me. Yeah. So my past was still lingering on. But you see, what happened was, I thank God that when I became a new creature in him, right. and yeah. God got in me, me, all that past stuff I can talk about, and I thank God for it, because I pressed on and I moved on. So now you see, why I used to have, um, I would snap you up, as they say. I was sharp. Mm -hmm. I was, if you did something wrong, I'm not uh, up, Jesus. And then I would say it nicely. Let me tell you something. I don't know who you thought that I thought that you was. But let me tell you about my resume that you don't know. Well, I had to get rid of that resume. All right. Yeah. 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 I had to get rid of it. Now, and sometimes I, I get a self-check. Like, oh, I said that too hard. You know what? I, I didn't mean to say that that way. Because that old person is creeping back. Right. So what happens is our past begin to do things in our mind. You begin to remember all those times um, the teacher would say, you ain't never gonna be nobody, you stupid. <laughs> or I don't know why. Or this girlfriend would tell you, you ugly. Or this person would tell you, you fat. Or, or this one would tell you, you're never going to be. And when you start trying to become, your past comes back to you. And you think about, oh, I'm not gonna make it because I remember at 13. She told me I could. The teacher who you admired the most. Or oh, I remember at 19, the pastor that you trusted the most, he cheated on his wife. Or he, you seen him doing something that was not of God, and you failed. Mm -hmm. Testimony that I talk about all the time, and I love to share it because God blessed me from it. I've never <coughs> been a thief. I don't do liars and I don't do things. Amen. I was the assistant pastor of a church. I'm not going to say the church name. I was the assistant pastor of a church. <laughs> <Amen>. <laughs> and the pastor, I mean, I did everything. I was the assistant pastor and his personal assistant, his and his wife. And he charged me with a bezel. Now understand, the man said I took $20,000. 
in a four month period, but I had evicted three I had been evicted three times and was living in a hotel at that. No, we was living at um in Motel Six, paying thirty one dollars a day and barely paying. But I got t t twenty thousand dollars. Went to court, no, got a lawyer, went to court. And by the time we got to court, we had disproved everything but two thousand one hundred and ninety seven dollars that he took. <laughs> Do you know the judge still charged me? Mm-hmm. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. Charged me with, they changed it from embezzlement to misappropriation of funds. What? I didn't misappropriate nothing. I got every receipt, every, receipt, every line item. When he went and got the dogs groomed for $327.19, three times a month, we got that. Had everything. But the judge had the nerve to say, Ma'am, you can prove every penny. So I took a plea. No contest, they say. And I said I was never going back to church. When I came back to Zion, Mount Zion, I didn't want to do nothing. No, I'm laying time out. I don't want to do nothing. Guess why? I was going to let my past hey, take my future. You see, I have leaders. First of all, they was with me every step of the way, way with my leaders at that time, praying for me as I went through. And when God brought me on the other side of through, amen, it'd be so funny, sometimes she'll say, do that's some so, that's some so. And I'll look at her and she'll look at me, I'll say, yes, ma'am. Because for a very split second, I'll be like, okay, but what if? There's no what if. When God cleanses you, and you've been reconciled, amen. And God makes you, makes you a new that, that past back there. That's why when you hear people say they do a 360 degree, that's wrong. But guess what you did? You right, you right back doing the same thing, but you do a 180 because you go in a different direction. We got different paths. Amen. 
But I lift them up the mighty name of Jesus. Because my past has been cleared and my future is perfect. Amen. Amen.